Hi, I'm Rita Norton. I've known Leslie 13, 14 years. <laughs> we worked together at <clears throat> Southeastern State University. Um, she's always been a good person. She's never, matter of fact, she's, <laughs> she's held me back. When it, I'm one of those that <clears throat> outspoken and, you know, and she'd always be the one to reel me in and calm me down. And uh, I just, um, I just can't believe that she's having to deal with stuff like this. Um, I met Jim. Uh, I guess Jasper was little, little, little boy, little baby. Used to give him his birthday cards on the the seventeenth of January. That was his birthday, and I always did him like I did my grandkids. I gave him birthday money, and um, I didn't have much interaction with Jim. He was always kind of uh, standoffish. Uh, he never really wanted to engage with, uh, I guess, with any of Leslie's friends, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, they come out to the house a few times, and uh, we sold them a blazer. Um, you know, and he just never, never really was that friendly. But Leslie was my friend, and uh, she always still felt like she was part of the family. Um, we've always had that kind of connection, friendship. Bond, I guess is what I would call it. I thought it was awesome that she finally found somebody. Then I noticed that uh, Leslie was kind of, um, I don't know, she just wasn't, felt like she was being pulled away or st kind of standoffish maybe. I don't know, but it seemed like it was more, I knew something wasn't right. I was in a, an abusive relationship for years, and uh, you're kind of embarrassed. You get embarrassed because you think, you know, I've done something, or, you know, or you always try to, um, um, to please them so they don't, you know push you or slap you or belittle you. But anyway, I knew something was not right going on with Leslie and one night she came up to my house and she was upset. She had Jasper with her and uh, she, she opened up to me and told me that um, Jim was being abusive to her and I, you know, me being from a situation like that, um, I told her to take Jasper and, and leave. And um, she didn't. Um, I, Jasper, he's a sweet little boy. Um, and it just progressively, it just progressively got worse. And, uh, I would occasionally see Jim, you know, she finally, they split, and uh, it, it was, it was not good. And, um, anyway, I, I ran into Jim one day, didn't realize it was Jim, standing in line to pay my cell phone bill at U.S. Cellular. And, um, I went to go pull, step up to the counter whenever the guy said, who's next, and, he was just standing back and didn't say anything, and so I started to step forward, and he kind of got a little belligerent, and I said, well, I am so sorry. I apologize. I didn't realize that you were waiting to pay your bill, too, and, um, and there was an older man standing there as well, and uh, so I stepped back, and... The older man, he stepped up. I guess he was next, and he paid his cell phone bill. And 
And then Jim, which I didn't realize was Jim at the time, because he had a, a big a beard and a long, nasty-looking hair. Well, he kept turning around staring at me and shooting me looks. And so, you know, I just kind of more or less blowed it off, you know. And well, I, then when I realized who it was, he started um, popping his mouth off, like, you know, saying rude stuff. And I couldn't even really, um, really tell you exactly what it was, but uh, I just kind of blowed him off. And I kind of laughed at him because he started like, like going, what, what, you know, like, like he was trying to intimidate me, and me, being a, <laughs> you know, I, I, from, if you've ever been in a situation like that, you develop to, to the point where you're not going to let somebody have that, your, that power, your power, you take your power back, and so, uh, he stared at me, walking out the whole entire time, and the older man, he, he just stood there. He had to have some help with his phone, I guess, as well. And he kept looking at me, and he'd look back, and he's like, do you know that man? And I'm like, yeah, I know him. And he's going, you know, um, he's not very happy with you. And I'm like, he's just not a very nice person. And, you know, and anyway... Jim continues staring at me, and he walks out the door, and he's still, like, you know, like, trying to intimidate me, and, and I'm, of course, I laughed, you know, because he was being childish and ridiculous. He, he thought he was intimidating me, and, and people were looking at him like, what an idiot, you know, and then, well, he was, I seen him driving by. And he was driving real slow in front of the store. And so, of course, I'm looking out the window. And he's trying to, like, give me the stink eye or evil eye or whatever. And he's like, you know, and flips me off. And and I, I just kind of, like, waved at him, you know. And... I don't know if people would think I was being a smart aleck or not. I wasn't intentionally trying to be a smart aleck. I was just letting him know he wasn't intimidating me. He was trying to bully me. I, he's, I wasn't going to have a part of it, any part of it. <coughs> and anyway, the next time I had a situation with him, which was just a, like, I, I couldn't tell you a timeline. It was a few weeks, or it could have been a month or two. When my husband and I were in Walmart, and I didn't realize that they were in the store. Him and his wife, uh, by that time he had married this woman, Lisa. Um, anyway, I'm a big Dr. Pepper fan. I drink a lot of it. and uh, I walked down, we had our basket, and went to, to, get, to get my Dr. Pepper. And so we turned and walked down that aisle. Well, it was uh, Jim and Lisa, and he had they had uh, Jasper. And um, I look up, and he looks up. Our eyes meet, and um, he goes, "Let's go." It's that white trash bitch. And, of course, I'm not going to say anything because there's a child. I mean, he, I mean, he's doing this stuff, and he's got his own son there. I mean, you just don't do that stuff in front of a, of a child. And he pushed Jasper and, 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 and took his hand, just kind of shoved Lisa and him down. The, and she's like, where? You know, where? And so she turns around and she looks at me and, and they kept it going. And uh, my husband's like, uh, who is that? You know, and I'm like, oh, that's Leslie's ex. 
what did he say? And I said, he's called me a white trash bitch. And uh, so I just kind of like went on. You know, it says, I'm not going to put myself down on his level. Uh, I guess the next encounter was, we, we, Friday nights is our date night. It has been since, since we've been together, and we've been together over 10 years. And we always make Friday night our date night, where we go out and eat. And we enjoy eating at Chili's. And I didn't know that uh, Lisa worked there as a bartender. And um, we'd been in there several times. And, of course, when we'd sit there and eat, then I'd, I saw him, Jim, I saw him. And he would be sitting in the bar area. Um, you know, I just kind of like, he, he would just watch us. And I just more or less, uh, you know, he's not going to ruin my, my Friday night. So I, a lot of times I would just ignore him. Well, we went in there one particular night to eat. And... I, I don't know what I had all over my hands, but I had to go to the bathroom. And and uh, so my husband and our friends, they went ahead and sat down. And I told him, I said, I, you know, I sat down and I'm like, um, told him, you know, water, I want water with women. And I don't know what I want to eat yet, but, I'm, I'm, but I got to go wash my hands. And uh, so I went to the bathroom. And so I'm walking through there, and Jim is sitting at a table, and he's got Jasper sitting there in the bar, and Jasper's eating, and he's eating off the plate as well. And he looks up, and he looks at me, and of course, before I had left the table, uh, Davey, my husband, he's kind of, he kind of a jokester, I guess. Anyway, he had popped off something, and I was laughing. Well, I was laughing. I was still smiling and grinning about it whenever I walked into the bathroom. And when I walked by Jim and Jasper, I guess he took it upon that I was laughing at him. And I walked in the bathroom and washed my hands. Uh, and I came out and I was wiping them off with paper towels. And I always use paper towels to, like, doors I'm not a jummerphobe or anything like that, but you, some of the doorknobs are like nasty. Well, anyway, I walk out of the bathroom, <coughs> and Jim verbally assaults me. Uh, starts screaming at the top of his voice and pointing, that's her, that's her, she's the one, she's the one, and I'm like, I mean, it knocks me back, and I'm like, looking around and people are staring at me and I'm like eh, I'm the one okay I don't know what you're talking about you know <laughs> and of course my husband and, and friends and stuff they're sitting on the other side of the restaurant <coughs> they didn't realize what was going on but the whole entire bar section did and I, I called the police afterwards to file a report, and they asked me why I didn't call the police when the incident happened. Same as whenever, uh, you know, any of the situations. Uh, but the main one was when he verbally assaulted me in Chili's. Well, he had Jasper. You know, um... The way he was acting and didn't bring the police in on it. I didn't think, I, I didn't do it because I didn't think Jasper needs to be in a situation like that, you know. So that's when I called, I spoke to Ken Golden about the situation and he, and he asked me the same thing. Why did you, did you need to call the police? I'm like, no, I did not because there was a child sitting there. Well, then I got to noticing him driving up and down on, uh, we live on Church Road, which is out in the country. 
and I would I noticed him he drove a white Ford truck, uh, an older model Ford, uh, probably in the 90s or early 2000s. I'm not really for sure what year, but he would be sitting up the road from my house, watching my house. And of course, I spoke to Ken Golden again about the situation, and um, he never, as far as I know, he never came down my drive. Okay, there were several instances where I'd see him following me, uh, pull up beside me, uh, pop off crap, just childish stuff to me. I mean, they're, they're, they're grown adults and they're sitting there acting ridiculous. And they was doing this in front of Jasper. What is that teaching him? You know. Um, and I guess the last instant was, um, you know, um, she called the house one night to my husband. We have a uh, maintenance and remodel business. And Leslie had told me where they had lived, where they lived in a, a trailer house over out on, uh, um, Armstrong or the old Cato Highway or some, you know, um, anyway, the woman, uh, called here one night and was wanting my husband to do an add-on on her trailer house and how big and, and my husband told her he didn't, uh, he didn't work on trailer houses because it was too hard to do an add-on on a trailer house because it's, uh, uh, the the giving, you know, it it moves. And um, anyway, she gave her name as Lisa and where their trailer was. And I, um, I just had this real sicky feeling that something wasn't right. Anyway, um, they talked just a little bit longer, and then my husband, they hung up. And so I was discussing it with my husband. And I told him, I said, what did she say her last name was? And he's like, she didn't. She just said her first name was Lisa. And that they needed a room added on to their trailer house. And, you know, where it was and everything, and I told my husband that, that uh, something just wasn't right. And so he called her back. The number that she called and on, you know, called on, well, he called her back. And he asked her what her last name was. And she didn't really want to give her last name. And um, I can't really remember the name she used. It wasn't. Timon or Timon or however it is you pronounce her last name. Uh, it was like um, Lisa Black or Lisa Blackman or, or something to that effect. And, um, but like I said, she was real hesitant on giving her name. And um, anyway, my husband told her that he wouldn't be able to do the work because he, he did not do work on trailer houses. And that was basically the the end of the discussion, but after afterwards, after he hung up from talking to her the last time, I told him, uh, I told him my, my gut feeling told me that that was uh, Lisa. I don't know why she would, I, you know, it's, I'm just guessing, it, I can't figure out why she would try to maneuver my husband to come out to her oh, trailer house, you know. Um, we just more or less nipped it in the bud right there. Um, I'd see them occasionally a few times after that. Uh, I always just kind of like walked off and uh, like I said, I wasn't going to stoop to their level. I uh, went to court with Leslie uh, a couple of times. Um, 
just one court appearance in particular. Uh, Leslie had been shot, and uh, him, Jim, and Lisa were very, very nervous. Um, you could tell they were nervous in the courtroom. I, uh, I don't know. I just, I just think the whole thing stinks. <laughs> I don't think Lisa, uh, Lisa and Jim have been totally honest and upfront. Um, I don't know. I'm not comfortable with people like that doing. If they will bully somebody out in public. What are they going to do? <coughs> what are they teaching this child to be a bully? I mean, they're they're treating him to, teaching him to be a bully. I just don't think they're very honest people. The court appearances and stuff like that. Uh, you know, he uh, he would just shoot. He would shoot me and my daughter. Uh, we would be there as witnesses or moral support for Leslie. And all we got was like dirty looks and um, stared at. Uh, he looked at my, yeah, my daughter. Uh, kind of was creepy. It was like he was stripping her with his eyes. And he hadn't been married to this Lisa for very long. Um, I don't know. Then I find out that they have left the country. And Jasper. And I thought our judicial system was supposed to for the good of a child, and this all just stinks to high health. I don't see anything that's doing Jasper any good. Um, I've just known Leslie too many years to know that she's not that type of person to, to be intentionally mean to somebody or bully somebody. Um, Honestly, I wish she had taken Jasper in one when I told her to. You know, um, she might still have her son. And he might be going through, we don't know what he's going through right now. Don't even know where he's at. He's got a birthday coming up in January. Uh, she hasn't seen him in over a year. Um, I don't know, it just kind of breaks my heart. Because um, kids are the one that pays for it. They use the kids to hurt another parent. You know, I, I used to get my, when I was in an abusive relationship, I had broke bones and bruises. They go away, but the, um, the damage is done on the inside and never goes away. And um, the kids, the kids are the one that's that's scarred for life. And I've got two children that are. I've got one in particular that's very. She's very bitter. Um, and it's just breaks my heart that a child has to pay for a parent that's trying to be spiteful and to to hurt the other person in the relationship. I don't think that's right. And it's supposed to be for the good of the child and, and um, I don't know. I don't know. 
that's about my whole I can say is, you know, um, I think Jasper needs to be back with his mother. Not with two people that intentionally go around trying to hurt people, use people. I mean, all they're doing is passing it on to another child to be that way. That's it. That's about all I can say.